Well, good morning, good people. We thank God for you. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Um, we are rejoicing and we're glad therein. We're grateful to God for life, for health, for strength, for the use and activity of our limbs. Uh, we are thankful to God and we are appreciative for another time to where we can come together as a body of Christ, as a family, and we can be able to pray together. We can be able to bombard heaven. We can be able to call on the name of the Lord. And uh, we, we just thank God because of the privilege that we call prayer. We're grateful to God for the fact that we can uh, be able to come to him in such a way that where he uh, can be, he can be, he can be our source and our strength and our everything. We're so grateful for all of you uh, for your um, participation this morning in prayer, not just this morning, but every week that we come together as a body of Christ and we and we petition God. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and we give you all of the honor. Uh, we're grateful for this day that you made, a day that we've never seen before, and a day that we'll never, ever see again. We're so thankful. We're appreciative for you giving us life and health and strength. We thank you for the use and activity of our limbs. Thank you for giving us a heart and a mind to want to pray. Thank you for giving us a heart and a mind to want to be in your presence. Um, Father, uh, I don't know I don't know who all is on this call, uh, I, but it makes no difference um, before we come asking you for anything, God, first and foremost, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us of every sin, known and unknown. We ask you to wash us and cleanse us and purge us from all unrighteousness. We echo what David said. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to the multitude of your tender mercy. We ask you to blot out our transgressions, God. Against you and you only have we sinned. Against you and you only um, have we committed iniquity, transgression. Against you and you only have we committed things in our heart, um, things that we've dead done, things that we've said, thought, thoughts that we have thought, <laughs> things that have crossed our minds. Uh, we've done that in our heart. And against you and you only have we done things with our hands. Maybe we've committed um, sins, uh, maybe knowingly or unknowingly, maybe willingly or unwillingly. Uh, but God makes no difference what bucket or what category it falls in. Uh, all have sinned, you said in your word, and come short of your glory. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus, before we just waltz up into your presence and just waltz up into your presence, asking you for this and asking you for that. We first and foremost want to be in right relationship with you. We don't want to break fellowship. We want you to, uh, we want you to hear us. We want you to be able to hearken diligently to our cry. You said in your word, if we regard sin or hold on to sin in our hearts and hold on to sin in our lives, you said you will not hear us. Uh, we're grateful um, for your word. We're thankful for your word, that your word will let us know, will give us a recipe and let us know exactly what we need to do in order to gain your audience. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to forgive us, to wash us and to cleanse us and to purge us from everything. And that's just like the old enemy. Anytime that we come into your presence, he always reminds Reminds us of what we've done. Uh, that's what he did to. Uh, the, that's what he did to the high priest Joshua in Zechariah chapter three. Uh, the high priest was standing in your presence, literally in your presence, and Satan stood at his right hand, accusing him. And I believe God that is one of the enemy's most lethal weapons that he stands next to us, or he 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 plants thoughts in our mind, or whispers in our ears when we are in your presence and when we're desiring to. To do right, when we're desiring to live right, when we're desiring to make the right choices and make the right decisions, he plants these thoughts in our minds and whispers in our ears and reminds us what we've done last summer. Uh, and that's exactly what it is that he did to Joshua, the high priest. He was standing next to him and he was accusing him of what it is that he had done. But God, we're grateful for that passage of scripture because Joshua did not even have to acknowledge what Satan was doing and what Satan was saying. He he just kept standing in your presence and you rebuke the Lord. You rebuke Satan. Yeah, the, the scripture says the Lord rebuke you, Satan. And we're grateful for that, God. We're grateful that we can come to you and we can call on your name. And this is the way we can get help. This is the way that we get deliverance. But the enemy puts so much doubt in our heart and so much doubt in our mind and causes us to be so unsure.
sure of our relationship with you and causes us to be so feel so guilty about things that we've done in our past and things that we've done uh, even presently, things that we've engaged in and cause us not to want to come to your presence. Oh, but God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that everyone that's on this line will not get will not get duped by the enemy and not come into your presence because they feel guilty about something. Oh, but God, this is the place that we're supposed to come. This is the place that we're supposed to uh, bombard. This is the place we ought to come humbly but boldly before the throne of grace that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help. The enemy's plan, the enemy's plot, the enemy's scheme is that we will stay away from God. But no, we're not ignorant. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. But no, we understand game, rep- recognize his game. We see his game. We see his plot. We see his scheme. And we're going to come to the one place that can help us. Staying away from you was got us in this mess. Staying away from you is what got us in this jam. Staying away from you is what keep what keeps us in this perpetual state, this perpetual rut that we're in. But God, we're grateful that you are a God that's plenteous in mercy. We're grateful, God, that you are God that's standing there with your arms stretched out and we can come to you humbly and boldly and sincerely. And we give your name the glory for that. We pray right now in the name of Jesus for every person that has a problem with being in your presence. Uh, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for that person that only prays when we're in a corporate setting. We come right now in the name of Jesus on behalf of that individual that's done a bunch of dirt, that's committed a bunch of sin, oh, that's done this and that's done that. God, who among us, God, that don't have a rap sheet? We may not have done what they've done. We may not have been what they've been, but all of us have a history. All of us have a past and all of us are trying to live out this life. Romans chapter 7 verse 18 says that it says that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. All of us got a flesh and all of our flesh, you told us in your word, there's no good thing. You told us in Romans 7, 21, you says that I find then a law that when I want to do good, evil is present with us. No matter how good we try to do, no matter how much we pray, no matter how much we make up in our mind to get in our word, no matter how much we make up in our mind, they hear the word, they listen to the word, they apply the word. Oh, our flesh is always with us. He's always among us and we have to constantly beat our body and bring our flesh into subjection. We give your name the glory, God. We give you the honor because you remind us and you let us know that we're in a war. You let us know that we're in a battle. You let us know that that, that, that this is not a sprint, but no, this is a marathon and we got to continually day after day, moment after moment, situation after situation. We got the desire and we got to pursue the victory in you. We give you glory now, God. Help these individuals. Help every person, God, that's on this prayer call that have gotten to the point to where they've allowed what they've done and allowed what have, what has transpired to push them out of your presence. But God, no, it's in your presence. It's where you, when we fess up, it's when we confess what it is that we're going, what's going on. God, this is where you will clean us up. And God, the way you'll strengthen us and you'll help us to be able to do what it is that we cannot do. We, we can't do it on our own. We can't walk this way on our own. But no, God, we need your power. We need your strength. We need your anointing. We're grateful for that. We're thankful, God, that you're there. And you say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. Thank you for the rest that can only come in you. Thank you for the rest that we can only find in you. Thank you for the rest, God, that we can only uh, that we can only experience when we're in your presence. It's not in our money. It's not in our job. It's not in our relationship. We think if we pursue those things and we get those things that we'll find rest. But no, God, we will be restless. But God, the only rest we can have, we can be sleeping under a bridge and God have rest in you. Oh God, we can be in, we can, we can be in, and we can be sleeping in our car and God have rest in you. Oh God, we can be, we can be in the middle of a war, be middle of a pandemic and God, we can have rest in you. We thank you for the rest that only comes from you. We're so thankful and we're so appreciative for that rest. You told us it belongs to us. You told us that it, it belongs to us and we're thankful for it. We thank you, God, to where as a corporate body, we continually, we come to you with targeted prayers. We come to you 
God, with specific things that's on our heart and specific things that's in our spirit and specific things, God, that we want you to do in and through our ministry and in and through our lives as individual. Again, God, we're grateful that we can come to you and we, we're not, we're not selfish. We can come to you. We're not just wanting, to, we're not just coming to you saying, give me, lend me, spare me. Can I borrow, please? We're not just coming to you saying, will you do this for me? And will you do that for me? That's not what prayer is. Prayer is not coming to you and begging you to do this for us and begging you to do that. Prayer is not us coming to you and just simply saying, oh, I need this and I need that. And I know, God, that's not what prayer is. You told us when we come and pray, we ought to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtor. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Oh, and give us this day our daily bread uh, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. There's a pattern to prayer. That's not a thing that we have to do specifically in reciting and saying, but there's a pattern and there's a pattern in prayer. We ought to come to you in a particular way. We ought to acknowledge you in a particular way. We're not ought to come to you just begging you to move and begging you to bless us, but no, we ought to come to prayer so you can change us. We ought to come to prayer that way if you never move the situation, if you never change the person, if you never get us off the job, if you never heal our body, if you never give us a financial breakthrough, if we, if, if that thing never changes, you change us. We give you glory for that. We give you honor that we have a proper understanding of what prayer is. Prayer is not manipulating you or bamboozling you or trying to trick you into doing something that we want you to do for us. That's not what prayer is. Prayer is coming to you and rehearsing your word. Prayer is coming to you and getting to a point where we're in relationship with you and we're in commune with you and we're in fellowship with you and we need you to move on our behalf for you to do what it is that we cannot do on our own and we thank you for that understanding as a corporate body that we understand the purpose of prayer we understand the power of prayer and we understand the potency of prayer we're grateful that we know that you're going to move whenever it is that we understand why we're praying corporately but the, to mo- this this morning uh, our, our, our targeted prayer as the body of Christ we're praying we're praying that wait the power and the spirits of religion and pride out of our lives and that we will experience a fresh anointing in our life. We're praying as a corporate body. We're praying as a family that the power that that, that the power of, of the spirits of religion and pride will be broken out of our lives and that we will experience a fresh anointing in our lives. Oh, we are we are praying for that God and our scripture reference is first Peter chapter 5 verse number 6 it simply says humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time we're praying God and we're praying corporately we're praying as the body of Christ that that we be free from from every religious spirit. And we pray right now, God, because there, there are individuals and there are persons, God, that may not even understand, may not even know, may not even recognize that we're dealing with a religious spirit, that we're dealing with a spirit that, 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 that knows you, but do not experience you. Oh God, we need to pray against that, God. And we believe we need to park there for a moment. We need to harp on that for a moment. We come against a spirit, God, that that knows about God but does not allow you to get on us, God. We, we, we're praying for that spirit that, that knows the word but does not allow the word to change them. Uh, we, we, we pray for that spirit that, 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 that hears the word but does not allow the word to penetrate their heart and penetrate their mind. God, we can be a little more Pharisee at God than we, than we know. The Pharisees, they knew the word. They knew the law. The scribes, they knew the word. They knew the law. But whenever it was that they ran into the word to experience the word, when they had saw the, the self revelation of God in the person of Jesus Christ, they refused and they rejected. They were so stuck on what they knew. They were so stuck on what they had learned. They were so stuck in what was in their heart that you were not even able to move them. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for all of us, God, not to fall prey to a religious spirit that God, we get so 
stuck in what we know. We get so stuck in what it is that we think we know about you that God, we refuse to evolve and we refuse to change. That's what a religious spirit really is. What it all boils down to. It is a refusal to change. It is an individual that think they know you so well that God, they refuse to change. We come up against that right now in the name of Jesus, God, the where, the where we know you so well and you've been so good to us and you use us and you, you, you work through us and you put your grace on our life and you put your anointing on our life, God. And maybe, maybe we teach and maybe we preach and maybe we sing and maybe we do this in the ministry. Maybe we do that in the kingdom. Uh, maybe you use us in this area. Maybe you use us in that capacity. And because you've used, you, you're using us or because you've used us in the past, we think that that is a, 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 a safe God or a free pass for us to stay the way that we are. Oh no, God, that is a religious spirit. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that God, we don't get so cuss accustomed to you that God, we do not keep our ear bent toward heaven and listening out for what it is that you desire to tell us the edit in our lives and edit out of our, out of our lives. God, we come up against a religious spirit, which is really the spirit of pride, which is really the spirit to where I feel like I got it all understood that nobody can tell me anything that I'm never wrong in any situation that it, no matter where, no matter where it comes, no matter what comes down the pipe, no matter what comes down the tube, I'm never wrong. I can never see myself. Oh God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that God, you help us all. Nobody wants to be wrong. Nobody wants to be the offended, the, the, uh, the person that offends individuals. Nobody want to be the person that's, 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 that's doing, that's doing the, the transgression. Nobody wants to be that individual. Oh, but God help us all to be able to be so spiritually keen. Yeah, God, we can even acknowledge ourselves when we're wrong. Help us, God. Your word tell us in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, you say, he that think if he stand, take heed lest he fall. God, help us to always be able to know and understand that we ha we are prone to make mistakes. We're prone to error. We're prone to say some things that we shouldn't say. We're prone to do some things we should not do. We're prone to hurt people feeling. We're prone to put our foot in our mouth. We're prone to offend person. And God, help us to always be mindful of that. Don't let us get stuck and saying, I don't care what they say. I don't care the, what they do. No, God, we don't want to be prideful and full of pride, knowing you and acknowledging you, having a relationship with you, but refuse to let you change us. Help us all, God, that where we will get to the point that where whatever it is that you desire to do in and through our lives, oh God, we're saying you got the permission, you got the right to move us. I don't care if we've been walking with you for five years. I don't care if we've been, walk if you we've been walking with you for 10, for 20, for 30, for 40, for 50, for 60, for 70 years. It doesn't matter if we've been in relationship with you all of our lives. Oh God, help us to never get to the point that when we get too big for our britches, the way you don't allow, the way we don't allow you to change us in our heart and in our mind. Help us, God. We don't want to be religious. We don't want to be stubborn, God. The way we'll reject your truth and reject what it is that you say to us. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We thank you even for a target prayer like this because oftentimes when we come into your presence, we always saying, get them, God. Get my wife. Get my husband. Get my kids. Get my grands. God, get them for what they did to me. Lord, let them show, show them when they're wrong. Show them how wrong they are. Show them what they did us all, but this prayer this morning from the person that's praying it to the person that just logged on and the person that's going to log on at 631. Oh God, all of us, God, we're praying today that you don't get them, but God, you get us. That you don't show them, you show us. Oh God, help us to be able to look at ourselves. Help us to, to realize, God, the, the person, the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror, that God, we are not you. We're not perfect. And there's some things that we need to adjust in our life. We don't want to be the modern day Pharisees. We don't want to be the modern day religious folk. Oh, but God, we're saying no. Whatever it is that you desire to do and need to do in our lives, we want you to do it, God. We don't want to be, re we don't want to be religious, God. We don't want to be stubborn. We don't want to reject change and grow. And God, some of us, we love tooting our horn about how long we've been walking with you. We love tooting our horn about how much we know about you and what you did here and what you did there. But when it comes to our growth and our development, God, we are, we are, we are 60 year old toddlers, God. We are 70 year old toddlers. We're 50 year old toddlers. We've been walking with you for 35 years, but God, we are a toddler in the things of God. Oh, but God, don't let that be said about us. Don't let us be tooting our horn.
on and flexing our spiritual muscles about how long we've been walking with you. But God, when it comes to our growth, when it comes to our development, when it comes to our maturity, oh God, we're toddlers, we're babies, God, we're adolescents, eh, not even adolescents at best. God, help us to be to allow our longevity, help us to, to allow the amount of time that we've known you and walked with you to match our maturity. Oh God, if we know better, we do better. Oh God, if we've been walking with you long time, like we like to toot our horn, then God, let our let our longevity match our maturity. Lord, let us come after you in such a way that just because I've been saved for 19 years, that does not mean that you cannot show me something. That does not mean that a babe in Christ cannot say, you know what? You offended me there. You hurt me there. It doesn't mean that a babe in Christ cannot come and say there's something about me. Oh, that I need to change. It could be you, God. You can speak to a donkey. You can speak to a child. You can speak to anybody. Don't let a let, don't ever allow us, God, to be so pious and so arrogant, God, and so narcissistic to where we can't see ourselves. Oh, but this prayer this morning is not about, Lord, somebody else, but no, it's about us, God. We don't want to get to the point where we refuse to grow. We refuse to develop. We refuse to change. Oh, God, we've been walking with you all this time, but yet we're still lying. We've been walking with you all this time, and yet we're still using profanity. We've been walking with you all this time, but yet we still have this anger and this bitterness in our heart. Oh, we've been walking with you all this time, but we refuse to forgive. We've been walking with you all this time, but we refuse to tithe. We've been walking with you all this time, and we refuse to spend time in your word. Oh, God, help us not to be religious. We don't, we know the right things to say. We know how to say, oh, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Oh, I'm too stressed to be blessed. Oh, we know how to say, oh, the Lord worketh all things according to his will and his purpose. We know how to say all the right things, but God, help us, God, to let our lifestyle match what it is that we know. Oh, God, help us not to hold on to where you were, but God, help us to pursue where you're, where you're going. Help us not to hold on, God, because the ark has moved and God, your presence is moving. Oh, what are the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness? They were following you. They were following the pillar of cloud. They were following the pillar of fire and they had to follow you wherever you went, wherever you moved. They couldn't park at that particular place and say this where God was and just because you moved, oh, just because the spirit of the Lord moved, I refuse to go where he go. But no God, if they wanted to be protected, if they wanted your provision, if they wanted your manna, if they wanted you to be able to fight for them, they had to follow the cloud. Wherever you were going, that's where they had to go. Wherever you were moving, that's where they had to move. They had to move when you move, just like that. And help us to put that in our heart. Help us to put that in our spirit. That wherever you're moving, whatever you're desiring to do in our lives afresh and anew, help us, God, to move wherever it is that you desire to move. We give your name the glory this morning. We give your name the honor. And this is why so many of us do not experience you. This is why some of, so many of us, God, because we're walking in pride and we're walking in religious spirit and we cannot experience like our target prayer says today, that fresh anointing. And God, we cannot feel your presence and experience that fresh anointing. God, because we don't move when you move, because we won't edit out what you tell us to edit out. We just omit it. We just ignore it. We just act like it's not there. We just act like you never said anything. And we do not earnestly pursue you, God. Oh, but God, we're pursuing you this morning. I'm so grateful that I got a, 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 a prayer call full of people. Oh, including the person that's praying. That's in hot pursuit of you. I'm so grateful that I got a, a prayer call full of people. Oh, that desire to be wherever you are, God. That's where we want to be. Whatever you're doing, God, that's what we want you to do in our life. Whatever it is you're saying, God. Whatever it is you're telling us to work on. Whatever you're telling us to pull out. God, we're so anxious. And God, we're so we're so tenacious. God, that we'll do what we need to do to be right with you. Thank you, God, that you've given us all a heart of obedience. Thank you, God, that you've given us all a mindset, God, that we will do whatever we need to do to be who it is that you called us to be. We will not think of ourselves more highly. We remove our religious spirits out of our mind and our heart. Oh, we bind and we destroy every yoke, every burden of religion and legalism. Oh, we will not hold on to what it is that we know, but God will come after you. We'll humble ourselves after you, God, and we'll acknowledge you in all our ways that you can guide us and you can teach us in your ways. We will humble ourselves in your sight, Lord, the way you'll be able to lift us up. It's when we humble ourselves that you lift us up. God, it's when we come to you and say we don't know, but God, that's when you will help us. Oh, God, we give you glory. and God, we give you honor and we give you all of the praise, God, because you're going to break the spirit of religion, God, and you're going to break and destroy every yoke, God, and you're going to give us a fresh
fresh anointing, fresh oil in our life, fresh oil in our heart, fresh oil in our marriage, fresh oil in the relationship with our children, fresh oil, God, send your refreshing, send your renewal, send your revival, God, touch everything that we touch, touch everything that we engage in, God, afresh and anew, oh God, just because we are allowing you to change us. God, we thank you for the freshness that you're going to send our way. We give you glory. We give you honor. I take a moment, God, and I pray for everyone on this call. We're in. Some of us may not be battling with the religious spirit or spirit of pride. But God, we all, I, 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 let me retract that. All of us are battling with that and we should be battling against that. We should be fighting against that. But that may not be our issue this morning. It may not be the thing that that is our most pressing need. But God, help us and mature to be able to understand that it may not be my need today. But it's definitely something I need to acknowledge and definitely something that I need to make sure I put something in my spiritual doggy bag to make sure that I'm 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 good and I'm earnestly contending against that. We pray right now in the name of Jesus for everyone on this call, whatever their most pressing need is, whatever it is they need you to move in their life. Maybe it's in their mind. Maybe somebody's on this call and they have suicidal thoughts. The enemy constantly is, is telling them that it's better if they're not here. Take their life. We pray against that right now with the name of Jesus. And God, we pray, God, that you will that you will snatch that person out of that state, that season of suicide and put somebody in their life that they can talk to. And God, reveal yourself to them in a real and a fresh way. Maybe it's not suicidal thoughts. Maybe it's marital woes and marital struggles. I pray, God, for every married couple, God, that desire, God, your fresh oil on their life, in their home. God, that you'll do it for them. We give you glory, God, that, we're, that, that what you have joined together, let no man put us under, even when it's me. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will keep our marriages, God, and you'll give us all the heart and the mind, God, to be in hot pursuit of you. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God. Maybe it's not marital, maybe it's somebody who's not even married, but they desire to be married, God. We pray for patience. We pray, God, to where you will allow this season of singleness in their life, God, to be the best times of their life, to where they're pursuing you with no strings attached, as relates to spouses. Uh, we pray, God, even if you if they don't desire to be married and they're not single and waiting, but God, we pray that you will keep them. They can't say they don't want to be married, but do married folk stuff. It doesn't work that way, but God, help us all to know that if we desire not to be married, God, keep us and keep us content to keep us satisfied with you. I don't know what everyone is facing on this prayer call, but God, I don't have to. Uh, you know, maybe there's someone, God, that's, that's hurting in their body. There's someone that's in need of a healing. You are Jehovah Rapha. Uh, and you are, God, the, the God uh, of, of healing. You're the one that heals us. God, you have more in your, there's, there's, there's more medicine in your garment. As I said on Sunday, I was talking so fast and preaching so fast. I said that there's chemo in in your garments, that there's insulin and named all these different things. I was talking too fast. I, I was intending to say that God has something in your garment that's stronger and better than chemo, that's stronger and better than insulin, that's stronger and better than metformin, that's stronger and better than whatever it is that we're taking, um, dialysis and all these things. There's something in the hem of your garment, your healing in your garment. It's better than all of the things that we use, God, to heal our bodies because there'll be no side effects when you touch us. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise that the persons that's on this call, God, that needs your healing, God, we pray you'll heal them. The persons on this call that need your deliverance, we pray you'll deliver them. The persons that's on this call that need you to touch them, God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, I pray that you'll do it right now in the name of Jesus. I believe it's not your will for us to be perpetually in pain. I believe it's not your will that every Every day, God, our body ought to be ravishing with pain. And I believe.
believe God. I believe you, you'll let us go through seasons like that. You'll let, let us go through times like that. But God, I think every, for every time we feel that way, we ought to be actively pursuing you. And even in that, will you always heal? No. Even in that, will you always take away that thorn? No. If Paul was here, he'll tell us that he asked you to take that thorn away three times and you said, my grace is sufficient. So even if you don't heal it, God, you give us a grace to where we can bear it. We cannot tell the lie and say we can't take it. We cannot tell that lie and say we cannot handle it. Your word said whatever it is we're dealing with, we can handle it. In fact, we're grace for it. So even if you don't heal our body, even if you don't touch us mentally, even if you don't heal our marriage, our children, our financial woes, you'll give us a grace to be able to endure. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus for everyone on this call that you give us the grace that we need in order to endure whatever that thing is, whatever that thing that's stressing us out, that's keeping us up at night, that has us tossing and turning, that have us feeling anxiety and angst in our hearts and in our minds. Whatever that thing is, you've given us the grace to endure it. We thank you. Help us to tap into the grace. Help us to walk into the grace. Help us to know that you won't put more on us than we're able to bear. We give you glory now. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you for truth and love ministries. Thank you, God, for your not allowing us to survive during this time, but our survival. We've been thriving during this time, and we're so thankful for it. it, we're, it we're not tooting our horn. We're not sticking our chest out, God, because it's all about you. It's your, this is your work. This is your church. These are your people. <laughs> this is your word. Um, I'm your vessel. Uh, so it's all about you, But and it's hard to toot our horn in the middle of a time and a season where so many people are hurting. So many people have died because of this COVID-19. So many people have lost their lives and lost their loved ones because of this COVID-19. So many people are struggling, lost their jobs, unemployed because of this season. So it's hard for us to embellish. It's hard for us to gloat uh, about what it is that's going on when so many people are hurting. So God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for the hurting people. But God, because there's hurting people, that still doesn't mean we can't thank you for the fact that, that, that you have, that you are blessing us and God, that you have safeguarded us. We pray for the hurting. We pray for persons that have lost loved ones, that you'll minister to them in a way. We pray, God, that you will, that you will heal persons that's fighting for their lives, even now on ventilators and hospitals. We pray, God, for persons that we, that, that still isn't a vaccine, although you are the vaccine, but we pray as, as our country is opening back up and our world is opening back up, but yet there's still a virus among us. God, we pray, God, that you will safeguard us, that you will protect us, that you'll be with us. God, that we're not opening up and then opening caskets at the same time. We don't want that. God. So we pray that you will send a healing, that you will swipe this virus out of our country, out of our lives, out of our nation, that you will allow a vaccine to be created, that you would just, that you would step in as only you can to put an end to this madness. That's what our hope is. That's where our faith is, that you will continue to breathe on the president, the governors and the mayors and all of the persons that make the decision, that you will give them wisdom everywhere in every state. God, that we'll know how we ought to govern ourselves. But just because, and once again, just because things are bad, that doesn't mean that we ought to be down and gloomy and pessimistic. But no, things always are bad. We may not have never experienced this before, but God, we've experienced bad before. And even in the middle of things when they're bad, you're yet good. You're yet on the throne. And we thank you for that. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. For this, I recall to my mind, Therefore, have our hope. It is of your mercy that we're not consumed because your compassion fail not. But they're renewed towards us every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you for everyone that's on this call. That's a part of Truth and Love Ministries. And our friends and our family that's on this particular call. That's a part of, the, most importantly, the body of Christ. Breathe on us all. Touch us all. Strengthen us all. That way we can be able to walk out what it is that you have done. I pray, lastly, for all the people who have lost individuals so many people have lost family members, sisters and children and grandchildren and mothers and fathers and nieces and nephews. We pray for them all. God, that your grace will be sufficient and you will comfort them as being the God of all comfort. We give your name to praise. We give your name to glory. We give your name to honor. In Jesus' matchless name, amen, amen, 
and amen. Well, I thank God for your TIL Nation. Thank God for you, um, your faithfulness, your commitment to jumping on the call. I thank God for you. I tell you every time, a leader with no followers is just somebody that's taking a walk. And why do I keep saying that? Why is that so embedded in my heart and my mind? Because I appreciate you all. You don't have to let me be your leader. You don't have to let Lady C be your leader. You don't have to be a part of this local church. It's, it's, it's over uh, probably knocking on the door somewhere somewhere near 2,000 churches in Jacksonville. You can be at all of them. You don't even have to go to a church anymore, a physical body. You can you can be a part of somebody e-church. So you can be a, a member of anybody church in the world if you wanted to. Uh, but you uh, think enough to be a part of the church with little old me, little old Lady C. And I appreciate that. And you allow us to lead you. And that is not being said uh, with, with every person and with every situation. But I thank God that I have no complaints when it comes to the persons that are attached to truth and love. I love you guys. I thank God for you. And I appreciate you wanting to pray with us and appreciate you wanting to jump on this call and wanting to be faithful and be committed during this season, how you have been faithful and been committed. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Know that I'm here for you. Our team is here for you. Your ministry leaders are here for you. Your, 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 everybody is here for you. That's, that's, that's actively in ministry. We're here for you. Reach out to us if you need us. And we thank God for you. Do me two quick favors. I need you to tune in tomorrow. Don't, don't be weary and well doing. Tune in tomorrow for our rock solid series as we go on to first Peter chapter two. We're going to be in our rock solid series. Going to be a blessing. It's going to kind of mirror what we prayed today. It's talking about growth and development, talking about spiritual growth. And so it's going to be a blessing, whether at noon or 7 p.m. Come on, I want you to fight to get in front of your phone, your tablet, your television for one of those services. Don't have to double dip, but do one of those services. Fight to get there. Like you fight to watch those shows and you fight to do what you do. Fight to get there the way you can be able to hear the word of the Lord. When your man of God, when your woman of God is teaching and preaching, fight to make sure that you're in posture and the proper posture the way you're there to receive. Also, if you don't mind, I want you to encourage the person's own group mate. Let them know how prayer has blessed you. This is not a pump Pastor Kobe moment up, but no, this is to encourage them to where they'll they'll get on the next time. Thank you all for always doing that. I know some of y'all like get be really redundant. You say the same thing every Wednesday. That's okay, y'all. I say the same thing every week too. Welcome to the club. So it's fine. Just if you got to copy and paste the same comment you say every Wednesday, I'll just appreciate the fact that you're participating and just because I'm asking you to do it. So thank you so much. There's a blessing in obedience, and I thank you guys for being obedient and following what it is that I'm asking you to do. And you do it. On, it's only so many ways you can slice and dice how wonderful prayer was. So you don't have to say nothing new. You can say the same thing every week, but it is so important that we do it so we can encourage the others that want to be a part. All right. I love you guys. I thank God for you. I want you to have a blessed and a prosperous and a powerful day on purpose. Here comes the church. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Love you. Bye-bye.